Hey everyone, uh, so today uh, we're going to be exploring the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor with Professor Zoran Radek, um, who's actually been a very long time user of Nanom, uh, so long in fact that this particular channel was one of the first structures that we loaded into Nanom uh, back in the very early days when we were getting started at UC San Diego. Um, so yeah, we're going to be exploring the traditional mechanisms of how this nicotine actually interacts with this, this protein down here as well as talk about how that relates to the coronavirus and some of the research happening on tobacco usage, um, you know, nicotine usage, and actually um, you know, having some effects on whether people get sick from COVID-19 or not. So um, yeah, Zoran, you know, thanks so much for, for you know, joining this NM session, and you know, we're very excited to learn more about these protein structures and the new research coming out. Thank you, Steve. Um... Yes, so this idea about uh, involvement of uh, nicotinic receptor and nicotine in uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic came uh, very recently uh, from France. Um, there are some very important people in this field who live and work there, and in particular Jean-Pierre Changé, one of uh, um, uh, long, long-term uh, uh, authors uh, and researchers in the field and many other fields. So uh, what they observed over there was that uh, nicot uh, nicotine users uh, um, were uh, underrepresented in uh, a number of patients that were treated uh, uh, for COVID-19 um, infection. And uh, this is the critical molecule, nicotine. So. Uh, uh, it, it appeared that uh, those people who have this molecule, more of this molecule in their system, somehow were protected from virus. Um, this molecule, in order to act, has to uh, go from cigarette itself. So once uh, smokers light cigarette, it uh, goes through lungs into blood and then to brain. Uh, it's interesting molecule. It has two nitrogen atoms that you can see in blue. One of them is protonated, and this reversible protonation allows it to assume at least two forms. In, uh, um, one is uncharged, neutral, and the other protonated. Why is that important? Because uncharged form will go through biological membranes, including blood-brain barrier, and get to brain, and then it will bind to receptor. Now, in the receptor, there is a little pocket where uh, this protonated uh, version of a molecule will bind, and then show you uh, how this little molecule in effect, let me rotate it this little bit. This is pentamer, but it's not homopentamer. This receptor, I'll say something about it also. There is a binding pocket here. Um, and uh, it is right here. So this molecule enters here and is stabilized by uh, aromatic residues of the pocket. And those aromatic residues are really important because most, if not all, um, uh, nicotinic uh, uh, ligands, agonists, antagonists, are either protonated or cationic, and they take advantage of interaction with tyrosines, tryptophanes, uh, phenylalanines of the pocket. Now, what happens is once uh, um, ligands bind there, they regulate opening and closing of the channel. This uh, nicotine receptor is in effect ion channel. And this vestibule that you see inside is closed now because this uh, particular structure was obtained in closed state. But uh, when it is open, then uh, calcium and sodium ions can flow through and from one side of membrane to another, change polarization state of membrane and uh, uh, participate in, in uh, uh, propagation of uh, nerve impulses. So um, what uh, idea that uh, uh, Jean-Pierre Changé and his colleagues in France came up with was that once nicotine is bound, so once smokers uh, enjoy their cigarette, uh, in this location, no other um, uh, ligands can bind there 
and uh, in particular, uh, spike protein of uh, uh, coronavirus. Spike protein is one of first uh, proteins of uh, viral capsid that gets in contact with host cell. And uh, uh, this protein of coronavirus has a special property unlike any other uh, spike proteins of other coronaviruses, that it uh, has in, in its structure particular small loop rich in cationic residues. Those cationic residues can insert themselves here, at least theoretically and computationally, as a recent study has confirmed. And by uh, inserting themselves here, uh, they will affect functioning of receptor. However, once nicotine is bound there, receptor is protected. So that's the basis for the idea for this nicotinic theory that smokers who have nicotine bound already there will uh, be protected from, uh, from effect of coronavirus on, uh, on uh, uh, their system. So this is a very familiar structure to a lot of us uh, working on the coronavirus. This is actually one of the spikes um, that is coming out of the sides of the coronavirus. And so if you look at the membrane, um, this is essentially one spike. And so typically when we look at the spike protein, uh, we're looking at this end. And this is the receptor binding domain, which we've covered in, in a few other videos uh, that we've done in here, where this part of the receptor binding domain would actually bind with the ACE2 receptor of the human body. And what we're actually exploring now is another potential binding site, um, because there's not really too many binding sites. Uh, you've got to look at these uh, teal uh, blue sites. Uh, these are like oscillation areas, which uh, means that you're going to have glycan shielding, which is going to prevent most human cells from interacting with most parts of the protein. However, there's a few exposed regions like the RBD. And so receptor binding domain, RBD at the top, um, and then the one that we're going to be looking at is actually on the side here. And you notice it's not really shielded by all these uh, glycans. And so uh, this is an area that is you know, potentially exposed. Uh, a few things with the structure. Uh, most deposits that we see of the spike protein actually don't include a solved version of these residues uh, because they're very flexible and it's very hard to capture that on cryo-EM or X-ray diffraction or, or some of the other techniques used to generate the experimental data so that we could build these models. Um, but what's very interesting is that you could build it in residue by residue, uh, filling it in with the genetic information that we know. And so uh, yeah, each residue here, uh, Zorin has, has correctly filled in. And what's really interesting is actually these pink arginines. And so these pink arginines um, are actually the ones that are gonna be interacting with our uh, nicotinic uh, acetylcholine receptor. And uh, yeah, so Zorin, yeah, Zorin happens to be an expert on that. And if you'd like to, to say anything more about this area of the spike before we jump into the interactions. Right. So, um, yeah. So as you, as uh, Steve um, very um, nicely pointed out, uh, 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 absence of uh, uh, any precise structural definition, def uh, defini uh, information about this uh, particular loop in cryo-EM structures points to its flexibility. So it will be, this loop will be able to ex uh, uh, ex uh, present itself to the uh, outer surface beyond um, uh, oligosaccharide envelope that will cover most of the spike protein. And uh, because of uh, uh, Coulombic charge that these three uh, arginine uh, side chains carry, it will be attractive point of interaction with other proteins. Now, uh, nicotinic receptor has history of uh, interacting with peptides um, containing uh, cationic residues. Uh, alpha neurotoxins is whole family of snake toxins, uh, snake uh, peptides from snake venom, uh, alpha cobra toxin, alpha bangrotoxin, uh, various cardiotoxins. They all exist uh, in uh, snake uh, venom and they bind to pocket uh, in the um, structure of uh, uh, 
nicotinic receptor, so-called orthosteric pocket. And uh, uh, this is uh, the st structure of this loop is very close to a uh, structure of uh, central loops in alpha neurotoxins that interact with that loop. Uh, there are other proteins also that interact with the uh, uh, nicotinic receptor, like lye proteins that we have in our brain, uh, like waglerins and conotoxins, small uh, toxins from snails, uh, conus snails. And so uh, all of the, that information makes this theory uh, believable and um, uh, uh, supports it. Uh, what makes, uh, what has, we have to be careful, however, uh, in looking at old uh, little blue, uh, blue clouds uh, sprinkled around a uh, spike protein because they represent shields that uh, will um, uh, interfere with uh, um, contacting with the with, uh, spike protein contact with uh, nicotinic receptor. The other uh, detail that we have to be uh, concerned about is uh, viral capsid itself. It, uh, uh, pro it is located on, uh, on this side here, down there, and um, uh, it presents physical um, obstacle to uh, contact of two proteins. Uh, nicotinic receptor, on the other hand, is membrane-bound protein. It is, uh, uh, its central part is embedded in the membrane. So two proteins have uh, relatively little um, um, conformational uh, space orientation, relative orientation to uh, form a complex. However, um, it is possible. It's not uh, most straightforward, but it looks possible and um, uh, by uh, uh, having nicotine there, uh, we uh, prevent formation of that complex and possibly prevent uh, infection. Uh, let's try to get zoom in to, into the pocket and uh, 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 find our critical interactions. So uh, we are looking, of course, uh, at uh, pr uh, those pink side chains. Uh, this one on the left, on your left, is uh, inserted right between, the, through transparent surface, you could tell there is a, one tyrosine underneath, another tyrosine on the left, and then there should be a tryptophan somewhere around it. So all this um, uh, immersion of uh, delocalized electrons around it will make that very tight uh, uh, bound in, uh, binding, uh, very good stabilization. Uh, and that is what we see in snake toxins as well. Uh, the same uh, pocket uh, is where they insert their um, uh, lysines or arginines. Uh, however, um, because this has not evolved really the uh, spike loop for this kind of binding uh, uh, pocket like uh, snake toxins uh, were, we would not expect quite as tight interaction. And that is uh, to some extent good because then uh, uh, ligands that don't bind to the pocket with so tight affinity could rescue and protect uh, a receptor from a spike loop binding. Uh, that's all matter of interaction of uh, uh, interplay of concentrations of uh, nicotine and uh, uh, spike protein. And uh, because uh, nicotine does not bind so tightly, uh, it will be able to protect only from a weaker type of interaction. For, with, it wouldn't be able to protect from bungarotoxin. So, so, so on, on a relative scale, you have uh, your very high binding affinity with bungarotoxin. You have maybe medium weak affinity with the nicotine, and then you have an even weaker affinity with the spike protein. Um, but without nicotine, the, the spike protein still does you know, potentially have some attractive interactions there. Um, right. The nicotine is just a bit stronger to, to block it out. Yeah, it, it, it would not necessarily even have to be stronger. It's always ratio between concentration and uh, affinity. And uh, when we have a larger, higher concentration of nicotine 
that may be a little uh, weaker binder, then uh, uh, we could still have protective effects. Okay, so um, let, let's go ahead and uh, see if we could um, yeah, add some more nicotines here, just for fun. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and use the modify menu to duplicate that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it several times. And cool. So yeah, now we have a bunch of our nicotines. And so basically if you have more of those nicotines uh, readily available, you yeah, know, they're sort of all over They're you know, in, in the binding pocket, they're you know, pushing this thing out. You know, that one gets pushed out, that one comes in, that one goes in, you know, there's a very dynamic interactive system happening here um, versus, you know, if we just had the, the one nicotine, yeah, you know, maybe it's not enough to really prevent this from happening, but with, you know, statistical mechanics and thermodynamics exactly. and water interactions. Statistics. Um, there's just, yeah, there's Statistics just a lot of is here the key. Yeah, in that uh, we won't be able to have so many nicotine molecules in so uh, uh, near small uh, small place space. But uh, looking at number of uh, receptor molecules that will be uh, that will be occupied by nicotine, uh, at higher concentration, more of them will have uh, their binding pockets occupied by nicotine and those won't be able to accept um, a spike. So there is a dynamic equilibrium. And uh, as soon as spike leaves, uh, nicotine can bind and protect from another spike molecule or vice versa. As soon as nicotine leaves, spike could bind. And uh, uh, so, uh, Nicotine molecule will go in and out, in and out. The more molecules we have, uh, the uh, time that it spend, it will spend statistically in the pocket will be longer, and the uh, chance of spike to uh, access the pocket will be smaller. Yeah, th thanks everyone for checking out uh, this series. Uh, we're going to be exploring the spike protein. This will probably be in a lot more videos coming up. Uh, the spike protein is really important because this is how the coronavirus actually gains entry into the cells in your body. Um, yeah, this has been a really great exploration of this nicotinic receptor. Um, yeah, I certainly learned a lot about you know how nicotine interacts with this nicotinic receptor, um, how bungrotoxin and snake venom actually also interacts with this nicotinic receptor, um, and then you know how the spike protein also might interact with the same nicotinic receptor. Um, so yeah, this has been very informative and thanks so much, Soren, for, for coming on and explaining all this. Sure. My pleasure. Thank you.